why does the community, greater Southern California community need to attend ICT? Because one, it's continued investment in this art form. It's a continued investment in making sure this professional regional theater continues. And it's an investment in yourself as you open your hearts and minds to other ideas or maybe new ways of thinking. Hi, I'm Karen Desai. I'm the artistic director and producer of International City Theater, opening our 37th season in February. And if you would like to hear more about the season, please stay tuned. The mission statement for International City Theater is to ent entertain, educate, inspire, and provoke thoughtful dialogue through live professional theater. Let me tell you about our 37th season for 2022. It's a season of comedy and contemplation. We're going to open with the, mu the songs of Stephen Sondheim, uh, Marry Me a Little. Um, little did I know that he would pass away while I was choosing that, but it's a wonderful way to open and pay tribute to the man who made such an impact on musical theater in our lifetime. Um, and then after that, we're doing A Doll's House Part Two um, by Lucas Knapp, who's quite a hot writer right now. Who, um, and you don't need to know the original by Ibsen that was written in the late 1800s to understand Part Two. Um, in fact, when it, Part One, well, the original A Doll's House by Ibsen was um, quite shocking at the time and the play was banned. So um, it's, it's an interesting take on what happens next. Then after that, we have for the summer, a fun play, The Legend of Georgia McBride by Matthew Lopez. And this is the story of a young man who's an Elvis impersonator is how he earns his living at this CD bar and finds out his wife is expecting their first child and the landlord wants his rent. And then he finds out the owner of the CD bar is firing him because he wants to open a drag show. So this young man, Casey is about to embark on a new adventure. Then after that, we have a wonderful play Valley Song by Fugard. This was his first play after apartheid. The Wall Street Journal said that this is, um, this play is what theater should be. So it's quite a beautiful play about generations coming together, the grandfather and who's raised the granddaughter and works the land. And um, she has dreams for her future. And he has the pain of trying to let go of the past and um, bringing that together. And then we have, we're going to end the season with a fun comedy, Ken Ludwig's Lend Me a Tenor, which we had slated to do in 2020, went before the world shut down. And um, hopefully we'll get to do that. I mean, it's a very fun, physical, farcical comedy. Um, let me tell you a little more about each one. Uh, Marry Me a Little, the songs of Stephen Sondheim. I, you know, I was looking for a small show and I wanted something you know, uh, I wanted music, a great fun way to start a season. And I also wanted something small because I had no idea where we might be with COVID and the pandemic. And I'm glad I chose something small because we're not back to any kind of, yeah, well, normalcy yet. But, you know, the surge seems to be on the decline. So I'm hoping by the time we open in February that um, people will be a lot more confident um, in come returning to the theater. And, um, and we're doing all the precautions necessary, vaccinations, IDs, and uh, masks. So they should feel safe. And, and all <clears throat> artists and staff are um, vaccinated and boosted, to tell you the truth. Marry Me a Little is about two lonely single people who aren't aware of each other, but are, and the whole thing is sung through. And the songs just capture you know, what they're going through and how they're feeling. And I guess we can all relate who hasn't been lonely at some point in their life. And Stephen Sondheim is like so wonderful in how he puts words together in his music and it just makes us think and grow. So that starts the season. And then 
Our second show of our 37th season is A Doll's House Part 2. And it's a wonderful look at Nora, who, you know, and the original play is from Enrique Ibsen, Norwegian writer who was writing in the late 1800s. And the interesting thing is that he was writing about women's role in society. And this is before women had the right to vote, you know, and, and when you think about the late 1800s and, and that a man was that sensitive to what, you know, a woman's role in society um, that, uh, you know, you can understand why it was so shocking for that time period and why at that time, of course, men banned that play because Nora walks out um, from her husband and her children, which is hard to understand as a mother also, but it was the time period and, and she was trapped. So it was the only choice she had if she wanted to expand her view of her own life. And what Lucas Knapp has done was she returns um, and, and the play she's, you know, um, the, the housekeeper, the husband and the daughter there's different scenes that she has with each one and they all have something they need. So it's um, an interesting look at um, his take on uh, where she, who she became and, and how, you know, and what that meant when she goes back to, not that she wants to reunite. She's, she's quite the woman's liver. <laughs> So um, interesting look at, at that. It, and you don't need to know the Ibsen play to understand this one. Then for our summer fun show for June is The Legend of Georgia McBride. And that's the story of a young man, Casey, who earns his living as an Elvis impersonator. And he finds out his um, wife is expecting their first child. And the landlord wants his rent and this CD bar where he's been working, the owner um, is firing him because he wants to open a drag show. And this is Casey's eye opener at new adventure into what that means. So um, including the drag show. So it, it's a fun show. Then a really beautiful play that the Wall Street Journal said, this play is what theater should be. Valley Song by Fugard. It's his first play after apartheid. It's a story of a grandfather and a granddaughter. It's generational and, and he's been raising her and working the land and still has that mentality because now it's post apartheid and, and that servitude. And he has a hard time let going of the, to let go of the past. And at the same time, here's this granddaughter who wants to go beyond this, who wants to explore and, and follow her dreams. And she loves to sing and wants to go to the city. And, and he has fears, of course. So it's a really beautiful coming of age and coming together of generations. It's a beautiful play. Then we're going to end the season on a really fun note. Ken Ludwig's Lend Me a Tenor. It's a classic comedy, Tony nominated, and uh, it's fun. It's a farce, it's a physical comedy, and um, it's a play that we were going to do in 2020, to, really in honor of one of our um, longtime philanthropists who's no longer with us, but it was a play that we did many years ago, and it was one that he really liked, and so his family is still supporting International City Theater, and, and that's one way to thank them and, and pay tribute to their dad, who, you know, who was an amazing supporter and made it possible when we moved off the campus of Long Beach City College to downtown into the Performing Arts Center and now the Beverly O'Neill Theater. Um, he made that move, he helped make that move possible because we were moving from a 99 seat theater to equity contracts, full equity contracts. And that was a big difference to our financial picture. And also a big investment, not only in the artist and the art form and um, growing into a you know truly professional regional theater company. What I want the audience to get out 
of the season is what I always want them to get. Because I believe theater's role is to educate and can also create a more harmonious society. And so I want them to be entertained, of course. I want them to have fun, I, but I want them to think and I want them to, to uh, reflect um, because that's what theater does. It not only, you know, it's maybe sometimes makes you question your judgment, maybe introduces you to um, someone who's very different and how eye-opening that is to our shared humanity and how much we are uh, so much alike from different cultures and um, different countries. Um, it really speaks to our shared humanity. The importance of theater subscribers versus a single ticket buyer is um, makes a huge difference for any professional theater company or any theater company because subscribers provide a base of support for a whole season. So I can take risks with bringing new ideas or new experiences to the community, um, to our audiences. Um, without that, if you had to like depend on every show to be a major hit, it would be dumbing down theater and it would be commercializing it and it wouldn't, it, it won't be serving society um, truly for what theater can do as far as educating and bringing diverse people together for, for better understanding. Theater companies like ICT need the community's help and support because that's the only way um, we can survive. Um, it's not just ticket sales. It's also how, how grateful we are to people who can afford to go beyond that and make a donation. Um, but also, but truly that, you know, theater is between actor and audience. So um, it's the audiences that make it rewarding for everyone. I'm Karen Desai. I'm the artistic director and producer of International City Theater, about to open our 37th anniversary season. And I hope you'll join us um, by purchasing a subscription or a ticket or making a donation. And you can do that by going to our website at ictlongbeach.org or by calling our box office at 562-436-4610. And I will so look forward to seeing you at ICT in 2022. Thank you.